Hello, my name is Rahul Tangarapalli and welcome to my presentation about automatic parallelization. So without any further delay, let's get started. So starting with the introduction, parallel, parallel programming for vector processors or multi-core processors or even multi-processors is an extremely difficult task. Uh, example, with four cores, we can have four threads, right? Uh, we can even have 10 threads if the processor speed is uh, uh, good enough. But the issue is managing all these, th all these 10 threads uh, is an extremely difficult task considering the communication and uh, sharing of data structures, etc. It is not it, it it is not an easy pro, easy for programmers in code uh, in the concrete mode, right? So this is where the automatic parallelization uh, takes place. So it basically converts uh, the sequential programming uh, to parallel programming and achieves the correctness in the program. So the target codes may be a vector processor, we can call it as vectorization, a multi-core processor, we can call it as concretization. But a clusterly, uh, you know, uh, loosely coupled uh, distributed memory process, you can call it as parallelization. So parallelism is uh, extraction, is process, is generally source to source transformation. So the reason for this is, uh, the reason for this is, you know, um, possible you could do with the binary, but the effectiveness is much lower. What happens is uh, when we look at the sequential programming, the loop with the array axis are important, right? Other scalar and all the parts are also important, but they don't speed up the processors. Uh, you know, the, they don't speed up the processor, or even they can't run a parallel processors. So before jumping into these, uh, you know, approaches, let's get into the background. Let's know what, uh, how, when started, when automatic parallelization started. So the research in this area has been began in 1968 by David Cook and others. It has been done within the context of C and Porton, and that those were the multi processors at that time. So then there came the vector machines in 1970s and the 1980s when our vendors uh, provided uh, you know vectorizing compilers uh, for that and program transformation techniques have been uh, developed in 1990s uh, that include parallelization of acyclic code parallelization of uh, loops and making runtime decisions. So let's look into the dependency analysis in compiler theory. What is dependency analysis? Uh, you know, it means execution order constraints between statements and instructions, right? And when parallelizing a program, it is important for us to know about what data is accessed by which statements. So, so we can know with the, you know, three types of dependencies. Uh, we can know with that dependency. So it's a, it is two dependency. Uh, the second one is anti-dependency and third one is output dependency. So, when I started researching uh, about uh, this topic, uh, I have came across to a lot of approaches, but I choose to go with this com comparative survey of approach to automatic parallelization. So this approach includes the scalar analysis, array analysis, and cumulative analysis as well. So coming to the scalar array analysis, uh, you know, both of the scalar and array techniques are, are used to uh, gather, uh, not often, but uh, they are used to gather every time. So Let's, uh, for starters, let's talk about this uh, scalar analysis. Uh, so what is scalar analysis? Basically, to sum up, we can say that uh, this analysis will identify search cases that can be parallelized simply due to the dependency complication. So whenever there is a dependency complication, uh, the scalar analysis parallelizes that, uh, that the error. So how did, how did, how it does that? I mean, they, they must be somewhere, right? So simply, you know, scalar analysis simply breaks the it breaks down the program to analyze scalar variable use and the dependencies that they are. So not only this, scalar analysis also checks the dependencies on you know other elements by their analysis. So we can call this analysis uh, as scalar symbolic analysis. So exact the exact counterpart for this is uh, R analysis. So what does R analysis do? Actually, it works on that and to find the privatizable arrays. So have you ever heard about uh, privatizable? So what is privatization? Uh, I have came across this privatization uh, during my research. So what is privatization? Well, it is a technique that uh, used in shared memory programming to enable parallelism. So it enables the parallelism, right? So how is this uh, privatization has been done? So Basically, it removes the dependencies that occur in different threads in a parallel program. It removes all those dependencies are uh, in different threads in a parallel program. So, you know, overall, this array is analyzed to give 
uh, an equation of axis, the axis, uh, you know, if possible, we can privatize the array. We can call this as a data flow analysis. Uh, data flow analysis. So uh, recently, a shift in pattern has been began. And the researchers have started looking for, uh, started looking into the techniques uh, where we can automatically parallelize such, uh, uh, automatically parallelize. So, so such, such as there, there was a cumulative analysis for that. So Martin Rigard and uh, Pedro Lins uh, proposed this cumulative analysis with a subset of the C language C++. So cumulative analysis is designed in such a way that it will recognize and exploit uh, cumulative operations. Uh, so in the cumulative analysis, uh, it uses two mathematical operations that can be performed in any order but still obtain the same result. Uh, they, they, they always obtain the same result, uh, the two operations. So these both people have been uh, uh, proposed this cumulative analysis and there have been some you know, implications for programmers uh, about this cumulative analysis. But uh, finally, uh, let's look that in the you know, conclusion. So, so we have learned about this automatic parallelization now. Uh, what this automatic parallelization means and its history, how to how, how to approach it, and uh, but each of these techniques, uh, uh, when I was researching, each of these techniques have own uh, right, own merits and demerits in their own way, their respective application. So currently, there was no uh, attempt to use multi parallelizing techniques in a compiler. So, however, the complexity of such a task, uh, you know, uh, makes it highly impossible. So. Um, so we can do that in cumulative analysis. So I said that we can talk about this cumulative analysis, right? So we can do that in cumulative analysis. So cumulative analysis uh, basically it imposes some restrictions on the programmer. So if these restrictions has been removed, uh, uh, we will be able to come. We will be able to you know uh, compile uh, parallelizing compilers uh, pretty soon. Uh, in future parallelizing techniques, there will be definitely a future for parallelizing compilers. So with the advancements of ILP, VLIW, and multi-tech, multi multi-processor multi architectures, new manufacturing techniques such as standard technology, you know, uh, the parallel program, parallel computing uh, may be entering a new, a new era of availability and utility. So I was looking forward to that, uh, you know, uh, the emphasis of the programmers in that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and these are my references. Uh, I have been searching all these topics and uh, researching uh, about this topic from this from this uh, you know theory and uh, this thesis. Uh, thank you.